hundreds of thousands of people suffer from bladder pain, and it's not always curable. So what are your options? Joining me now is Dr. Seth Strope. He is with Baptist MD Anderson Cancer Center and one of his patients, Lisa Mitchell, who you had so much pain, Lisa, that you eventually had to make this decision to replace your bladder completely. Thank you for being here, both of you. Do appreciate it. Would you share some of your story based on your comfort level as to what led you to make that difficult decision? Um... I went through two, maybe three years of um, pain, and my whole life just revolved around finding a bathroom. You couldn't travel or sit through a movie or anything. Um, so basically, I was so frustrated. Um, I went to the urologist. I saw a lot of blood in my urine, and um, after seeing the first urologist and going through several biopsies, I uh, believe they were looking for cancer but never found it. And meanwhile, I'm in agony, but um, my last urologist sent me to Dr. Strope and we made that decision together. It was, um, it's been a blessing. Has it been? And your recovery has been, this was just in April. You look fantastic and you, you, you look happy. Yes, I am. It's, I'm excited about life again. I'm doing things that I haven't been able to do in a long time. And it's just been wonderful. So, Doctor, obviously Lisa's case is very unusual based on the condition that she had. How is it different from other patients that you typically see as an oncologist? So, uh, the important point that, that Ms. Mitchell brought up is that she continued to have this blood in the urine and these symptoms. And that's very different than what many people with bladder pain actually have. Many people with bladder pain have that pain. We can control it. And we can control the symptoms that they're having. But the fact that there was blood and also you were starting to get kidney dysfunction as well from this disease process, which is also very, very abnormal. And that's why we had to go down that path. And I'd like to talk to you more about that, but considering the fact that most people may not be as, as extreme a case as Lisa, what are some of the warning signs? Maybe there's people who just think that, well, I had a lot of water and that's the reason that I'm going to the bathroom is more, more often than I normally do. What are those warning signs? So I would say that uh, blood in the urine is a huge warning sign that someone should get assessed by a urologist. If, um, if, especially if you're seeing blood in the urine, that's more than just you know something that's just, oh, that's okay, don't worry about it. Um, the other one would be pain that's not going away um, despite some of the treatments that we have available for it. And again, that would be something that needs to be assessed by a urologist to make sure that there's nothing else worse going on um, with that situation. And is it usually something that is eventually, it, it, it is something that is cancerous or is there, are there certain conditions perhaps as one gets older that are just very common that are easy to treat? Absolutely. So very commonly we see things um, just like an unstable bladder, um, which can be controlled by medications. There's a disease process called interstitial cystitis, which does have some medications and also dietary changes that can help affect that. But those types of disease processes don't get to the point where there's constant blood, where there's kidney dysfunction, where these other things are going on, which is why um, that cancer had to be ruled out in that case. And so it's interesting because you used part of, of Lisa's small intestine. Yes. Uh, is that a new procedure? Is it the commonly that, that the small intestine can be used for something like that? So we've been, wow. we've been doing that for probably about 30 years now. Wow. But the difference is that we've you know, refined the techniques over time to make it better, to make it um, so patients can recover quicker from that procedure. It used to be the length of stay for these types of procedures in the hospital was you know, over 10 days, up to two weeks. Um, now with the techniques that we're using in the, in the perioperative processes, it's down to about five to seven days. Recovery afterwards is much better than it used to be in the past. And I think to me, that's the main factor is that Patients should know whether it's bladder cancer or, or a severe, you know, inflammatory disorder like Ms. Mitchell had. There are options that can help and that can make people better. Has this changed your life, Lisa? Yes, absolutely. Thank you both for being here. Do appreciate it. I'm glad that you're doing so much better. Thank you. Uh, now, if you know someone maybe who is going through something similar, uh, having bladder pain, or, or maybe something as severe as what Lisa described, having to go to the bathroom basically every 15 minutes, you can share this entire interview with that person by going to the morning show page of newsforjacks.com to share the interview. In about an hour and a half, we'll have it there for you. Now, taking a live look at